Yo. Bye. Another one. Yeah, man. I'm sorry about my camera angle on the last, you know, my, my uh, on the tripod kind of messed up on me. But yeah, man, I'm back. Today is May 5th, 2020. Hope y'all are doing well. Practicing social distancing. Giving thanks for the things you do have. We're going to come back with another one. Today we're going to talk about something. I see it's getting a little bit of attention, so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and put my put my two cents in, piggyback on some others, some other videos and see. And uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, talk about OnlyFans. And as y'all might know, or some might not know, OnlyFans apparently is a site where you pay a subscription fee to a particular sexual artist, I guess you can call them, and with that subscription fee becomes, you know, a few pictures, maybe a video or two, and then that particular person or sexual artist has the ability to post content and charge per have your subscription fee you pay that and then within the subscription you still end up paying for I guess premium content and uh only reason I heard about OnlyFans was that No Jumper uh, Adam22 did a uh a review on I don't know her name but it's Trippy Red's ex-girlfriend he did a review on her OnlyFans and I, I didn't know what OnlyFans was, so I watched the, the video, and apparently he spent fifty dollars for a subscription to her OnlyFans. Now, mind you, he spent fifty dollars for a subscription just to do a review video. That review video probably got man that that no jumper video probably got like one million, two million views. So of those one let's just say one million views. Of those one million views, if ten percent, let's just say a hundred thousand of those people went and spent fifty dollars on her OnlyFans, she just made a lot of money. Okay. But uh, 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 that's that's beside the point. So apparently he spent 50 bucks for the subscription and she has nothing. Maybe a side boob or you know, a lot of twerking videos. But you're thinking like, man, you know, I mean, porn's free and you literally have some porn stars that have like hundreds of videos for free. But people are spending fifty bucks on a on a on a on one. I guess you can call them porn star. Not even, you know, some girls they're not posting anything. They're just doing little twerk videos. So just, I, I mean, my input on the whole thing is this. You know, I'm not gonna say that. Oh, you're a woman and. You should have more respect for yourself. This, that, and the third. The problem with saying things like that is not all women are raised like that. You have some women who are like third generation prostitutes. Their grandma was a prostitute, their mom's a prostitute, and they teach their daughter how to scheme and get money from men and sell their, you know, sexuality for money. So, they're subconsciously tuned 
through reinforcement of, hey, you know, manipulate this situation, manipulate this situation. You know, what can you do in this situation to come out on top? You know, they're not teaching their daughters, you know, hey, compromise or hey, never degrade yourself like that. Or this type of activity is degrading for a woman. You'll never see me do that as a mother. They're teaching their daughter, look, I'm going to show you how to do this, scheme this guy, and you're going to have to do this because you got you, we got to get this money. And it's, you know, it's 2020, so, you know, girls are having kids nowadays at 13, and their mamas are having them at 16. So, you know, say a girl's born in 07, she's having her first kid, she's already, you know, uh, you know selling herself. Her mom was born in like, you know, 94. So it's not really like, you know, you got some like third and fourth generation prostitutes nowadays. Or, you know, so it's not, you can't just say, oh, women on OnlyFans, they're so terrible. No, I mean, it's just, that's just how they're raised. You can't stop that. Just like you have a lot of people who were raised as racist. They're, they don't know that that's wrong. They just only know that. They're not growing up with a bunch of black people or a bunch of Asian people or a bunch of white people. They're, you know, like if you go in the middle of the, into the Middle East, they despise Americans because they're subconsciously tuned through reinforcement that Americans are bad. Americans killed your grandfather or whatever. So now they don't have a perspective of, well, hey, it's just the American government and actually you have a lot of Americans that do sympathize with other countries. But they don't know that. They, they have no concept of that. It's just, they're, like I said, they're subconsciously tuned through reinforcement. So this whole... OnlyFans and oh well the people on OnlyFans they're so terrible you can't blame them now you do have some women who yeah they know better they just want to get money and I mean it's like hey you know at the end of the day I will never spend money on on porn that just doesn't no the whole porn culture is a mind control tool and it and the the what people don't realize is that when you masturbate too much your semen count lowers okay so if you're masturbating three and four times a day and when you finish or when you ejaculate it's only a small amount versus guys who never watch porn and only you know, only it only uh you know produce semen whenever they're in a sexual act. Th those guys, that whenever they finally do it, they're busting a whole gallon. So it's like, you know, that they put the porn there so that way you can get addicted. And, you know, they know that it stimulates the dopamine. And they let it out. They're not. They're not. There's no um, regulation on porn. Of course, you can't do child pornography legally. You know, that's just, it's just, but as far as what type of sexual acts you do on camera, you literally can. Porn is so accepted that prostitution is illegal but if you have a prostitute and you have a tripod and a camera and a police pulls you over or a police catches you because you're like somewhere having sex and you say oh well hey this is a uh, we're doing a, a, a porn scene you will get charged with yeah indecent exposure if you're out somewhere in the open but you the female won't get a prostitution case 
because now she's a porn star and that's legal but prostitution is illegal see what I'm saying see how it's it's a it's a mind control deal it's a depopulation deal because now as a man who watches porn all the time it's harder for you to be stimulated by a real woman because the type of sex that she's capable of and the type of sex that you're capable of as that man probably isn't what you're watching and then you know it's there are only if there's there's not a lot of guys out there who are just sexually at their you know able to do whatever they like either they don't have the finances to have the the setup that they want or they don't have the physical attributes like you know the strength to control a woman and you know the manhood to please her and then the guys who do have that there are you know they have their sexual partner so for women you guys come out the you all you women out there who are doing the OnlyFans and doing the porn and stuff, you're coming out on the short end because as a porn star, yeah, you're going to have sex with that guy in the, in the porn scene, but he might not want to have sex with you outside of that scene. So now you're looking for that again, and it's like the percentage of men that are able to do that is, you know, better. If there are 100% of men, there's only like four or five percent of men who are able to sexually stimulate a girl at that level that's like when i lived in miami this is a perfect example when i lived in miami there were literally like seven or eight out of ten women that i seen were super beautiful women but like six or seven percent i mean six or seven out of ten of the guys i seen were straight lames they were losers they were like dirty they were like you know didn't care about themselves they were nerds so it's like you know me i took care of myself you know what i mean i was always straight so it's like damn it's it's guys in miami would literally have like they would have sex with like five or six women every day the guys who are actually, you know what I'm saying, on their on their shit and off day that they're not working, they're gonna knock down five or six girls and they would they would sit and talk about it. And then like it it's like it's like but it's not it's not hard to fathom because the amount of dudes there that were lame was so high. And as a female doing all this porn and doing OnlyFans, you're only contributing to, to that. You're making these guys more thirsty, more, more, more addicted to pornography. So now when it comes to your time to get with them and have a, you know, in, in the real world, you're not going to be able to be stimulated because they're not going to, they're not going to be able to give you what you need because you've already, they, their bar is set so high in their brain that they're not even getting the dopamine release whenever they would shoot. So it's like, I don't know, man. The whole OnlyFans porn culture is just so toxic. But like I said, we can't really blame them because that's just the way that they were taught. I, I personally know a female well, well, multiple females, actually, whose mothers were prostitutes. And they teach their daughters, hey, you know, hey, if he ain't got no money, he ain't trying to break you off. You know, you don't need to be with him. Which is, like, understandable. You don't want your daughter to be with someone who's broke. But at the same time, you don't want that to be the motivating factor of why your daughter gets with a guy. Oh, he's got money. You need to get with him. What? No. That's, that's, I don't, you 
know it's just and it's not just their fault it's it's a it's it takes a village to raise a child so that's where the every community is black there are only a few races whose communities all come together like it's ridiculous like Amish people they fucking come together they do everything they, they, they don't have a problem helping each other out they don't have a problem keeping everything in their one town fucking Chinese Asian people they do everything they'll they'll have an Asian owned restaurant or a business and only Asians will work there no I'm not saying that's a bad thing why can't why can't we as black people do that so that way our daughters don't have to grow up scheming and manipulating because they understand that hey I know this black man over here loves me for who I am and he's going to help me out. And his mom and dad are going to help me out. And his brother and sister are going to help me out. Not because I'm fucking them. No, because I'm black and we're all black and we're all we're all trying to strive forward. That should be the goal. So it's like that division, that separation, that oh 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 yeah, you know, I, I you know, I'm flexing harder than you. That whole mindset revolves all the way back around to women who are not able to provide for themselves without scheming and manipulating. Like, I grew up in a place where there's a lot of casinos. Do you know how many girls just roam casinos waiting for drunk dudes with money you would be surprised uh, and people who live in like Vegas they already know that you know how big Vegas prostitution is it's huge because guys come they just got you know what do you do as soon as you get like a, a whole bunch of money you go to Vegas you want to gamble a little bit okay you take like 200 racks to Vegas to gamble and girls are just there preying on you like sharks in the water. I don't know, man. Whole thing, and then, and then, so I guess I haven't personally seen the clip. I just heard people talking about Beyonce co-signing OnlyFans. What does that tell you? Anything that Beyonce does is scripted. She's not at that level anymore to where it's genuine. How, how, why is it so hard to fathom? Beyonce and Jay-Z are not genuine people anymore. It wasn't always like that. No one knew that Beyonce was going to be, when she was in Destiny Child, no one knew that she was going to be the top female artist of our time. No one knew that Jay Z would be would become what he is when he first started rapping. That's why that, I'm hundred percent sure that when Jay Z raps about selling drugs, I'm one million percent sure that that motherfucker was doing that shit. And now he's at a le- he's at a whole another level. The things he does is not uh, genuine. Everything is scripted. All these guys who are at the uh, Met Gala. That's some straight Illuminati upper echelon stuff. Come on, guys. Beyonce co-signing OnlyFans is just contributing to the culture. Of all the things she could be talking about. Like, oh, oh, you're a black girl. How about... Because, you know, I'm, I'm 100% sure that majority of Beyonce's fans are black women. So the things that she says resonates in that community more than any other community. So as a person with that voice 
Why would you be promoting that? Why wouldn't you be saying, oh, well, hey, here's the cost to start up this business. These are the things that you do need to do. Here are the phone numbers that you need to call. It's not that hard. Just, you know, instead it's, oh, yeah, get you an OnlyFans. What? No. Because you have the good girls who are listening to, well, I'm not going to say good girls. You have the girls who, whose parents didn't teach them to sexually manipulate people that are listening to Beyonce and watching Beyonce and and they're on the fence with, oh, should I get OnlyFans? You know, I do need a couple, a couple thousand dollars to do what I have to do for this uh, thing that I want to get done this project. Should I do it? And they're like, no, well, I don't want to degrade myself. And then Beyonce, someone who they look up to, says, oh, yeah, get you an OnlyFans. And they're like, all right, well, I'm going to do it. And now, boom, we have another, another female on there. And guys are like jacking off, thirsting about her, messaging her. And now she's getting all this stimulation from the uh, all all the stimulation from the reactions that she's getting. It's not healthy. Like, come on, man. And we're as a people, we're not gonna stop anything. The like. I, I'm a hundred percent sure that the people who have power now are going to have power like indefinitely. There's not going to be a huge power change in America. I, um, I hate to sound cynical and it's just there are buildings filled with books on mind control on psychology social engineering not social engineering social uh, basically there are books on how to control people in like masses of people a lot of books about that and you say, oh, well, you know, that they can't do that to me. Bro, it's already done. I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't like watching porn. But I understand that it's not healthy. So you can't watch it. You can't, like, if you have sex every day and you're finishing with your partner every day, you cannot watch sex. You cannot watch porn also and masturbate. That's just not you're 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 that's too much semen being produced every day, every day, every day. So it's like, bro, you got you know, I it's like it's been times in my life where I was not able to be with a woman. And I'm not saying that it's justified because like I said, I understand that it's toxic, it's not good, it's not healthy. I just, I just, like, everything that you see on the media is manipulated, period. The genuine people, like, what happened to Michael Jackson? They murdered him. And I promise you Michael Jackson was was genuine. Why do you think they're going to have all these allegations? Oh, Michael Jackson is this. Bro, Michael Jackson was a genuine, loving person. I, I, when I was a kid, and I was a little kid, me and my cousins would sleep in the same bed with each other. Dudes. And we didn't think nothing. It's not like, oh, let me touch on this butt or nothing. It's like, no. It's like, dude, I'm about to lay in this bed. I used to... I used to when I was a little kid, I would lay and cuddle up with my dad because my dad was in the my dad was in the uh, navy, and he would be gone. He's gone four or five months to come home, dude. I missed my dad. I'm gonna sleep with my dad the first night he gets home. You know what I'm saying? So 
That's that's called genuine love, man. Come on, man. Like, I, Michael Jackson would say some real stuff, man, and they did not like that. And he had influence as far as wealth and a, a following. Michael Jackson could have exposed a lot of stuff in detail. He he exposed it, but he didn't go into detail because I'm 100% sure he knew what was going to happen if he did. So all this OnlyFans and porn sites, bro, that's there for a reason. That is there for a reason. Come on, man. How can you not how can you not see this? It's like it's obvious. They they just let it they just you know they don't they don't care. It's just like yeah. Run it. It's all good. And then it's just I don't know man. I I don't even know. It's like The human will is a muscle just like any other muscle. It has to be strengthened. You have to it once you once you're exposed to that dopamine release, your willpower against it is gonna be weakened. So that's like me. I was growing up and my brother smoked cigarettes and my, my friends smoked cigarettes. And I never smoked cigarettes. And I was always like, bro, I would I would be the first one hollering, you guys don't need to smoke that. Why are y'all smoking cigarettes? I was like 18 before I smoked my first cigarette. Maybe 17. And I specifically remember my first cigarette exactly where I was at, exactly the people I was with. And I specifically remember the guy who I asked for a cigarette. I was like, man, let me hit that. And he's like, man, you do not want to hit this cigarette. It'll you'll it'll change your life. And before that, my willpower against it was strong. I had the only reason I wanted to smoke it is because I would drink liquor or I would smoke reefer and I would smoke a black and mild afterwards. And so I was like, okay, well, this black and mild tastes, you know, decent. It's not bad. Maybe a cigarette's the same way. And that was the that was the premise of me smoking a cigarette. And it was over with. Once I smoked that Joe, it was over with. My willpower towards cigarettes went down the drain. And now it's like at the at the height of me smoking I would sit and I never inhaled cigarettes like you do reefer I you know I just I would I would hit it put it in my mouth and then blow it out just you know I, I that you know I, I knew that it's not you know when you smoke reefer you hold it all the way in you know I was like no nah, I'm not about to be doing that with no cigarette smoke so I just hit it blow it out hit it blow it out and I smoke Marlboro 72s, so they're like super small cigarettes. So I can fin- literally finish a cigarette in like two minutes of just like hitting it. And I, I can smoke a whole pack of those at the casino playing blackjack, drinking uh, tequila and orange juice. Can smoke a whole pack of those in like 30 minutes to an hour by just like chain smoking and just blowing them out. But it's like, now that I and now I'm understanding that that's not healthy and I need to stop. You know, I can go a whole week and smoke one cigarette and then see someone smoking and be like, man, my willpower is still super weak. It's the same with pornography, it's the same with drugs. And unfortunately, with drugs, people don't start understanding 
that they're bad until they have a bad experience. Like Xanax or heroin or all these other hard drugs. Once you have like a, 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 a stroke or you overdose and your life gets saved, then you're like, oh man, maybe I should not do that anymore. And some people still do it. That's the same thing with pornography. People just don't feel like, oh, it's not a drug. Bro, pornography is a drug. Dopamine is being released. Don't don't think that it's not. What do you like? Come on. All the same characteristics. Do you get addicted? Do you need more each time? Yes, yes. You can't watch the same porn scene over and over and over again. Who wants to do that? You watch something else. But uh, some, some different girl, same stuff. You know what I mean? You just, you know, it's just like it's just like reefer. You start out, you know, when I started smoking re- weed, I used to smoke only on Fridays after school. And then it got to the point where I'd smoke Fridays and Saturdays. And I wouldn't smoke Sundays because I didn't want to be high when I went to school Monday. And then it was got to the point where, okay, well, I'll smoke Sunday. It's in the morning. Then it got to the point where, bro, in high school, I would smoke reefer every day. And on Fridays, I would link up with my Caucasian homies. And we'd smoke out of bongs before class in my first period the teacher used to have all the lights off and lamps lit in the corners and me and my homies would be in there lit but it all started with just a little bit it all started with just oh i'm gonna hit it you know once on fridays i'm gonna hit it a couple times on fridays to the point where it was every day and thank God I don't smoke reefer anymore. You know what I mean? And to be honest with you, it's harder to stop smoking cigarettes than reefer. Isn't that mind blowing? It's harder to stop smoking cigarettes than reefer. And you would think that it'd be the opposite. No way. It's so easy to stop smoking weed, especially when you have a job that drug tests. You're like, okay, well, or you or you have aspirations of doing something better with your life. And you're like, okay, well, I I could potentially get a better job. Let me not smoke weed. And that was my whole thought process. I was like, you know what? I was making good money. I was working for myself, making good money. And I had a side job. So it was like I was getting money. It's just like. Working for myself, I didn't have the benefits that I wanted. So I was like, man, I'm going to get a job in a field that's going to give me business benefits. So I might not want to smoke reefer. Hey there, can I get a... Can I get a... Let me get a... Get the sausage and egg croissant and no cheese, and then six uh, d- um, six donuts. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah, man. So y'all got y'all gotta wake up. You know, I, I, I you know, it it's just saddens me that you know. It's sad to me that things are the way they are, but that is the way it is. You ain't, we ain't gonna change it. Especially if we're divided like we are. We have to come together, y'all. Like, yeah, man. I'll be back on. I'm 
back on. Go watch my top video, y'all. Go follow College Night. Watch Minority Mindset. Go follow Big Hurt 916. Like and subscribe. Peace.